can't wait to see what illusion you've come up with. Waterproof. One of those romantic boy meets girl, boy loses girl stories. It's better. Enough. Alright, so we've got these cool Nike Tom Sachs shoes. We really like this poncho bag. So we're gonna use the shoes to make a bag. These shoes are pretty cool as they are, the Mars Yard overshoe. But there's a pretty cool shoe hiding underneath here that we want to reveal. So the first step is to take this like NASA space fabric off. I am using some small scissors. I'll just unpick these straps a little bit first so I can get a bit closer to the edge of the fabric and edge of the rubbery part. It's not quite the sole but there's a bit of rubber there that it's attached to so I'm gonna get those straps a little bit separated and then start cutting. To start cutting I'll use the small scissors to kind of like poke a little hole in the fabric first and then cut it all off. This is what you get once you've cut it and as you can see I've drawn some different designs but I decided that I wanted to kind of keep a lot of the original features. So what I'm doing here is I'm cutting the part that was attached to the shoe just kind of in a straight line and that's where I'm gonna put a zip for the opening of our new product which will be a, a nice pouch. If you've seen any of my other videos you'll recognize this chalk but if you're new this is a Clover brand chalkener. It's like a chalk rolly pen I use it for drawing lines on fabric. In my experience, it's never left any permanent marks, but they do warn to test it on a scrap just in case it does stain the fabric. But I mean, it's chalk, it should come off. They're super handy, highly recommend them. This was not easy to cut. My scissors did not have fun over the gluey bits especially, but it wasn't impossible, you can do it. Now I'm just measuring around the base, or what I will make the base of the bag. It's a circle shape already, so I'm gonna cut that circle shape out. I've added about a centimeter and a half um, for seam allowance as well, because I'm gonna use my sewing machine's, I don't know what to call it, fake overlocking stitch to keep the edges from fraying. I think I've got about three, two or three pieces of fabric here, I can't remember now, um, because I wanted it to be a little bit strong. And now I'm doing the kind of fake overlock stitch around the edge to attach the three pieces together and keep the edges from fraying. If you want to see more of our remakes or clothes we've made from scratch or illustrations or any other creative stuff we do, please go to ReCeremony, we've tagged at the bottom, we're on Instagram and here on YouTube. Now I am doing that same fake overlock stitch or whatever you want to call it. I'm sure there's a name, I'm sorry everyone. I'm doing that around the edge of this cool NASA fabric. And uh, again, this was not super easy because there are some gluey bits, so the needle was not really a fan of that. There were a couple of times I kind of had to like really guide it through the machine, but again, not impossible. Okay, so my two pieces are ready. I'm just folding the circle piece I made in half twice and marking those points. I want to match them then to the 
other fabrics, same points. This makes sewing a circle much, much easier. You do not need to do it totally blind. Please mark these four points or more if you want. Keep folding it in half until you have as many points as you want and match them all. Makes it a lot easier when you're pinning and sewing. My favorite part, pinning the circle into the circle. It's like really not that hard, but it does feel like a pain for some reason. Um, and because I wanted the, they've got this kind of edge with like an elastic kind of thread going through there. You can kind of see there's like a gray fabric sort of on the inside. Um, that makes a channel and I, I wanted that to stick out so I'm pinning the circle in a way that when I sew it that part will be outside not inside so I did make it a little bit trickier but look it looks cool right so I'm gonna flip it inside out then once I've pinned it and try and get ready to stitch it oh I didn't do it inside out in the end <laughs> um, I just put it around there. The sewing machine has like a little arm for doing these kind of armholes or leg holes or whatever so I've just done that with the bag. Again this wasn't that hard really. Um, it was a little bit thick but I was able to do it fairly easily. So now I'm moving on to the zip and I'm just gonna find my center and pin it from that point on one side. I'm matching the zip tape up to the stitches I've made before. So about a centimeter or centimeter and a half in. Up to you what you want your seam allowance to be with the zip. I'm using a zip foot here with a needle all the way to the left. Put it on wrong first for some reason. I used a zip that has a stopper at the bottom, which um, I didn't really want to do. I wanted to get a separated zip, but my local Japanese haberdashery did not have any zips like that for some reason. Or the ones they did were like for jackets, they were super long and I'm not a big fan of cutting zips. so. Anyway, here is the final result. This one is ever so slightly different. I used a red zip and a red bottom. This one is my pouch. The other one was my husband's. So I got two bags out of these two shoe covers. And I have to say it's very convenient when I'm riding my bicycle or just walking around. Great bag. 